Thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. At long last, as promised, it's time to review Fish Out of Water by Chris Squire, famously of the progressive group Yes. And this is a special video. Stay tuned to the end if you would like to participate in a giveaway. My friend Elad accidentally ordered two and sent me the extra copy for a giveaway on this channel. So stay tuned for the end of the video. All right, so the cool thing about this very affordable standalone Blu-ray release, other than it being lossless instead of lossy, is that this um, makes the surround mix available to those who didn't want to buy the big, huge deluxe box, which was released a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. It had a bunch of vinyl, was a larger form factor, and included a surround DVD. Authored DVD video style, so it was lossy. So now we get this standalone Blu-ray, which has some cool features, has a lossless surround mix, a new lossless stereo mix, uh, both by Jacko Jackjik, and it even has the original album mix in high resolution lossless if you want to listen to that. It has two promo videos and it has an audio commentary with Chris Squire on the screen giving the commentary while the album plays back. So, a uh, lot of features on this Blu-ray. Uh, I feel like they packed it out pretty well. The mix is pretty good, and the album is interesting. And so yeah, this has a lot going for it, and I love it any time that a label that put out a surround mix chooses to detach the surround mix from a big box. That is a very, very kind gesture for them and hopefully a money maker. I know there are those of us who uh, don't want to go in for big boxes just to get a surround mix. So Fish Out of Water, musically, features a pantheon of prog music artists. We have Bill Bruford from King Crimson, yes, and many other projects, Mel Collins from King Crimson, Patrick Mraz from yes, Jimmy Hastings from numerous prog associations, a pipe organist named Barry Rose, and Chris Squires, childhood friend Andrew Price Jackson on some keys and arrangements. Yes, we're taking a pause in 1975, and some of the members chose to enact the clause in their contract, allowing them to do a solo record. Fish Out of Water was Chris Squire's effort. In my opinion, this album harkens most closely to the Yes album, out of all the Yes albums that I've heard. And uh, I think there are some very cool features of it. I don't like it as much as my favorite Yes albums, but it does have a lot of musical similarities while also covering different territory, just working with different people. You get a chance to hear Chris Squire's vocal separate from John Anderson, like John Anderson's not in this mix. And the thing that I found cool about that, even though I understand why John Anderson became the lead singer for Yes, um, I think he has a more interesting lead vocal voice than Squire does. Uh, Chris Squire does have a good voice, and it is cool to like hear it isolated so that now when I go back and listen to Yes Recordings, I understand better like what Chris Squire's parts are and what he was bringing to those harmonies. So a very cool feature of this album indeed. I find uh, this album musically to be a little bit quirky, not always in a good way, but um, it is an interesting listen. I would say that my favorite track is Silently Falling. Melodically and in terms of orchestration and the mix, uh, I think that is the strongest that this album gets. Others may beg to differ. In terms of quirks, I find it kind of weird that the second track has this kind of love song vibe, but he constantly refers to the subject of the song as ya instead of you, and it just strikes me as odd every time. I realize that's probably an easier vowel to sing, but just saying, you know, this and that about ya, and this and that other thing about ya, it just strikes me as so nonchalant and colloquial that it's just hard for me to sink my teeth into as like a emotive love song. There are some kick-ass 
solo sections on this record, particularly during the title track uh, where you get an organ solo. Chris Squire took his recording gear to a cathedral that he sang in as a kid and had the pipe organist laboriously sync up to the album, which was tough because the pipe organ, when you press the keys, the sound comes out on a delay and they had to constantly work with the timing. <laughs> got it done and it sounds really incredible and that's one reason why the artistic theme of the album is very cathedral-like. You have stained glass and lots of cathedral shots but yeah elsewhere in the album you get a bass solo, there's a Hammond organ solo, there's a flute solo. The thing this album is a bit shy on is guitar. I think maybe Chris Squire wanted a chance to get away from like the, the heavy guitar noodling sound of Yes, and just work with different orchestration, particularly with his friend Andrew. Though when guitar does appear on the album, it's actually Squire himself playing. So maybe that was a cool creative outlet for him. So the mix, uh, the 5.1 mix in particular. I've heard this album several times in stereo and it's just okay. It's fine. Uh, the 5.1 mix I feel is very well done. It is not super duper discreet. There is a little bit of everything in most channels most of the time, and I'm going to say that certain parts favor being near the front of the room or favor being in the surrounds. You tend to get the drum kit, bass, and lead vocal most solidly up in front. You get things like orchestra, background vocals, keyboards of various kinds, and percussion in the surrounds. And depending on where you are in the album, you get some keys up front, and you can have guitars either in the front or the back, just depending on the moment. Solos can favor the surrounds, and they can also favor the fronts. So Jacko definitely took this mix on like a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Uh, again, it's not super discreet, and that may actually be a good thing for some people who don't like those 1970s hard-panned four-corners type of mixes. This feels balanced to me, and when I'm sitting in the sweet spot, I definitely like know where parts are coming from. All right, so all said, uh, this album doesn't fire on all cylinders for me musically, so I can't give it full marks there. Jacko Jack Jick's mix could have been a little bit better in terms of just uh, being a little bit more adventuresome, a little bit more aggressive, but I think he did a good job, and again, some people like a little bit less discreet style, a little bit more balanced style. So high marks there. And then uh, value, this is just dynamite. You don't have to buy the big box anymore. You can buy a very affordable standalone. And uh, the features are very cool, uh, especially Chris Squire's audio commentary. I would pick up this Blu-ray just for that. It's actually very interesting. I didn't know that he set up his studio to be able to record and mix in quadraphonic. And basically, um, it, it was the time when everything was quadraphonic, so the whole studio was set up to be quadraphonic. I don't think I ever ended up mixing anything in quadraphonic, but it looked good. And you also get lots of tidbits about the musicianship on the album and how he crafted his sound and things of that sort. Of course, the Rickenbacker bass sound that uh, I'm using on this track, I developed um, and used on Ritual on side for autograph Goshen's kind of a Jack Brucey fuzzy sound and to Wilbur. Excellent drumming on this track. Well, all of them, actually. So a tremendous value, and uh, to my ears, and again, I'm not an audiophile, have never claimed to be, don't accuse me of it, this does sound better than the uh, original mix and helps me get into the album a lot more. It is an interesting listen. I am definitely glad that this is in my life. It'll even get more listens in the future as I have time. Um, it's a little quirky, but... Uh, it's cool. I like it. And um, it's really nice to be able to see Chris Squire on the screen and um, to listen to a work that at one time was dear to his heart uh, now that he's passed. So it's nice as these artists are no longer with us that we still have their music. So that's about all for now. I'm going to sign off and encourage you per usual to live life and surround, but stay tuned for the giveaway.
Okay, so as I said earlier, there's a giveaway for this video. All you have to do to be eligible for me to send you this Blu-ray is leave a comment below to tell me your favorite Yes album, either in surround or stereo, or your favorite associated album. And I'm not going to pick a favorite, like match it with a favorite of mine. I'm just going to like type out everybody's names, print it out, cut them up, put them in a hat, and pick a name. Uh, or something along those lines. I'll try to make it fair. So leave your comment, share with me and everyone else uh, your favorite Yes Works, and um, good luck to everyone. And whether or not you win this copy, go get your own copy. Uh, support the fact that this uh, was released on a standalone Blu-ray. I would love to see more and more of that. Thanks for all of your support, and for watching, and for sharing the love of music with me. And until next time, Live life and surround.